friends, Gremlin Shay here, and I am here to wrap up the first half of the month of May for what I've read so far. That came out really weird. I'm sorry. It's late at night. Please don't judge me too harshly. No makeup on. Hair pulled back because I'm tired and I didn't want to spend a half an hour getting ready to film. I figured you guys would want what's in the content more than me to have a pretty face. So please forgive my non makeup face. But let's talk about all the things that I've read so far in the month of May because it's a lot, people. I'm going to start, as always, with my digital books, then my physical books, and then we'll end with the manga. I will leave the timestamps down below if you want to skip ahead to any of them. So I have three digital reads. They were all digital arcs that I was sent to read that I'm going to talk about really briefly. The first is kind of an unpopular opinion, and that is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. As of right now, this is a soft DNF for me. The... There is a lot of toxic talk about body image in the first 15% of this book that I'd read, and I was really struggling with it. Um, I do plan to revisit this come Smutathon in June, and we'll see if I do any better with it, but I thought I'd just let you know that that's in there, because no one seems to really be talking about how toxic it is. People have mentioned that it's there, but it was really, really tough for me. Maybe I was just in a bad spot mentally with it, I'm not 100% sure, but... I just want you guys to know that it's there. It can be problematic, so tread lightly and cautiously. All right, the next we have a novella, and that is Unbroken by Jay Crownover. This is a Loveless Texas novella. This is a point five of a new series coming out. I do hope to be reading the official first book here soon. And this was about a rough and tumble rodeo cowboy and a straight laced city girl who wants to make her skincare line successful and he becomes the face of it because he has gambled away all of his money and needs a paycheck. So that's kind of where this starts. It's a novella, so I'm not gonna say anymore. It was really fun, I really enjoyed it, solid four stars. And then the last digital read I actually just finished today and that is A Love Like Yours by Robin Huber, or Huber, I'm not 100% sure how you say the name. But this book was well written, it was a good story, I liked the characters, it falls into a trope that I don't tend to love, though, and it's a cheating trope. Granted, the cheating was minimal. It's not like they were sleeping together before she was officially done with the other guy, but it was still there. It's still cheating, and so I still struggled. Had this not been a cheating trope, I probably would have given it five stars, but because it was a cheating trope, I knocked an entire star, so it's a four star for me. The writing was solid. I know that it's a duology, and then the next book, this one comes out on the 21st, and then the next one comes out like next month. They are both coming out together through Forever Romance, just kind of back to back. So I do have an art copy of the sequel, A Story Like Ours, which I do plan to dig into soon. So look to my second half of the month wrap up, or the end of May wrap up for details on that one because I do plan on digging into that one very, very soon. So that is it for the digital books that I've read so far this month. Let's go ahead and dig in to the physical books. The first one we're going to talk about is the Tell It Again book club pick for the month of May, and that is Firebird by Mercedes Lackey. This one, again, I like Mercedes Lackey's writing, so I was already a fan of this book before I even dove in. I love Ilya, our main character. I think he's great. He goes on this massive journey. My biggest struggle with this book is the toxic family dynamic. Um, my husband's family dynamic isn't great, so there were too many points in the toxic family dynamic in here that became personal. Like, I related to them too much, and so I struggled a little bit with it for that reason, but that's very much an on-me personal thing. But the writing was good, the story was solid, I don't know how exact the retelling part of this is because it's like a dual retelling. It's the Firebird and then the Golden Bird, I think, are the two. I forget. It doesn't tell me on the back. But it's definitely Russian inspired. It's lovely. I really did enjoy my read of this. It's just a few of those toxic family moments hit very close to home for me. So I didn't end up enjoying that part of the storyline. Granted, it's all handled well, I think by Lackey and again I really love Mercedes Lackey's writing and I do think I will dig into more in this series because this is book one in a series by her it's 
I believe it's just the fairy tales series that it's called. But I do want to continue. It was good. I did enjoy it. Four stars. Next we have this giant epic thousand page book and that's Lord of Chaos by Robert Jordan. This is book six in the Wheel of Time series. The Wheel of Time series is an epic fantasy series for those of you who aren't familiar. It's getting a lot of traction here on booktube because there is a TV series adaptation coming out on Amazon I believe next year. They're starting filming this fall. Book six is like a huge linchpin in this series. There are three major events that happen in this book that are pivotal to the latter half of the series. And I do plan on digging into book seven very quickly because holy crap, this book, though very tough to read at points, was amazing. Most of the Robert Jordan books I have given between four and five stars. It is a solid all around series. This is definitely a five star read. It's not as dense as Tolkien, but it's not as easy to read as Sanderson. I think that's the easiest description that I have for the writing style that Robert Jordan has, because it does have some of that slightly more flowery fantasy writing that Tolkien has, but not nearly as densely. And then it is more accessible like Sanderson, but it's somewhere in the middle of those two. Um, I don't know that everybody would agree with that comparison, but that's just how I see the writing because it's dense and I took it in chunks. I ended up reading about 60 to 100 pages a day, depending on the day, except the last day. I read like the last 200 pages the last day I was reading, but solid series, good this is my husband's favorite book series of all time. And so I've slowly been trying to work my way through it. And I kept getting stuck on the audiobook on this one because a lot of the names sound the same, but they look very different on page. So I tried physically reading it and that ended up, ended up being better for me. Early on in the series, the audiobooks worked better for me, but now it's at a point where I have to read it so I understand exactly who we're talking about because there's so many characters to follow. I like being able to flip back and forth and check references and things like that. So anyways, highly suggest this series at this point. So yeah, check this one out. From there, let's move into some smut. How about some cowboy smut and Cowboy Bold by Carolyn Brown. This is the Longhorn Canyon novel, the first one. I kind of read them in a odd order. I did not read the first book first. So I finally just got the story, Kate and Retta. Kate and Retta are great characters. I love Kate and Retta so much. So seeing how their love came to be was really sweet for me. Solid four stars. I like Carolyn Brown's writing. And there's another Longhorn Canyon novel coming out soon. And I have the art copy in there. So I'm probably going to try to read that before Panelathon starts on Monday as well. And it's Wednesday night right now. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking I want to finish um, the arc from my phone and that one at least before Panelathon starts. We'll see if that actually happens. Next we have one that my husband bought for me in celebration of 1,000 subscribers and that is For the Killing of Kings by Howard Andrew Jones. I do have a dedicated review to this so I will leave that linked for you. I kept it spoiler free so you won't be spoiled but this is a great solid foundation to a fantasy trilogy and I suggest you pick it up. I gave it four stars. And last but not least for the physical books, I have Dragon Haven by Robin McKinley. This is a great young adult story about a teenage boy who lives on a dragon preserve. He ends up saving this dragon egg and hatching it and he has this dragon companion. It's a lot more involved than that. But again, this was really fun. I would give this like a 3.54 star. It was really fun. I, again, I like Robin McKinley's writing. And this is one that got saved from my Trash My TBR video. And... Then Steve picked it out for me to read this month because I had Steve pick out some books for me and this was one of them and I ended up enjoying it. So definitely check this one out. It's an older title so it should be easier to find. I actually found this at a thrift store. All right that is it for the physical books and the digital books. At this point we will be talking strictly about manga. I hope you guys will stick around. I do love my manga reads. They are a big part of what I'm reading these days and I am thoroughly enjoying what I'm reading. So definitely stick around and learn what I'm loving. Actually, quick time out on that. I have some graphic novels that I've started reading in preparation for Panelathon because I just couldn't wait to read them. <laughs> and so, yeah, let's just go ahead and dig right in. Let's start with the one that I liked the least, and that is Twisted Romance, 12 Tales of Love from Comics Hottest Talents. Um, so this is by 12 different 
people and there were really only like two stories in here out of the 12 that I really liked. Um, the one that's actually depicted on this cover was definitely my favorite. It actually features an asexual main character which was really interesting to read about in a romance and it's just not something I've really been exposed to in my reading thus far. I'm trying to be better about branching out into that and learning more about the LGBT community as there are some people really close to me in my life and I want to be able to respect and understand them and their viewpoints a little bit better. So anyways, yes, there's a variety of different relationships within here depicted. Some of them I just didn't love their art style. Others I didn't like the story and it was just, it was just okay. I think I'd have to give it two stars out of five just because I really only loved the two. But when you're dealing with, you know, story collections, that's kind of what you have the potential of running into. Next is a new favorite series and I do want to go pick up the other volumes that are out in this series and that is Goldie Vance. This one is by Hope Larson, Brittany Williams, and Sarah Stern. This is a really cute mystery fun series featuring Goldie here and she lives in a hotel and she wants to work with the detective here and it's just about all of their adventures. I think it's got some LGBT rep in here as well. That was a surprise. I didn't know that going in but I ended up really enjoying my time with Goldie so I definitely want to pick up I think it's up to volume four that's been published so far so I do want to pick up the other three and continue my journey with Goldie because this was just so much fun. Next I have two volumes in the same series and that is Fence. So we have volume one. I don't know why my comic shop had a different cover than the one that everybody else on booktube has but I really kind of like mine. It's fun so I will definitely keep my copy. But anyways Fence volume one and Fence volume two. I am definitely looking forward to volume three that is coming out later this year. I adore these boys. I am so invested in this story. Oh the tension. Oh the angst. And there is a couple in this second volume that they're not officially a couple, but I totally ship them together. I think it would be great. So I don't know if author will give that to me, but I kind of want it. Um, I put it on my Instagram stories because if I showed the one panel, I don't think it would spoil who they are. Yeah, it doesn't say their names, but these two, I totally ship them. So I really love this so far. I am thoroughly invested in Fence and will be till the end of time, I think, until the series is complete because I need to know what's gonna happen to my boys. All right, so everything else is strictly manga. Um, those are just some graphic novels that I picked up that are comics turned into graphic novels and I loved them. I'm converted, I think, <laughs> at least on certain series. I've got a bunch that I'm gonna start trying in during Panelathon. So definitely check out my vlogs for those to learn my thoughts on more of the format and stuff. I do have a little bit of digital manga that I've read this month, so let me pull that up just to make sure I don't miss any. All right, it's just two volumes from one series, actually, and that is volumes two and three of Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. Um, I've opted to continue to collect this one digitally for now. Um, this features a high school girl who ends up having this movie star come to her school to film on set and he's a couple years older than her and he has a particular pervy fetish that is very prominent in the series so if that kind of a thing would bother you then definitely steer clear of this one but <laughs> my smutty soul really likes this probably more than I should but I just think the antics are fun in this one we're getting to know the characters more and it's just a good time. I'm really enjoying it. So I do, if you like smutty things, I recommend Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. If you do not like smutty things, do not pick this one up. I mean, they've not been intimate or anything because it is an age gap. There's a legal, there's a legality thing here. So everything is very innocent and pure on that end, but his pervy stuff is very permanent, very prominent. So. Just be wary of that. Or if you love My Pink is Overflowing, this is a great series for you. All right, so let's jump into the physical manga that I've read so far this month. It is quite a pile, so we're just gonna dig, we're gonna start at the top and dig our way down. So, starting off, 
will be my most recent manga read, actually, and that is After the Rain, Volume 1. This is an age gap romance that I was hesitant to pick up. This is a seinen manga, which means it's typically geared towards men, and when I've run into seinen romances, I haven't had the best of luck. There's only been one that I've really enjoyed so far, but this one falls into the category of enjoy so far. Our girl is 17, and she is falling for her manager, who is 45 year old, years old, divorced, and has a child. And I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this. And I like it. Does that make me bad? Is, is there something wrong with me? I don't think so, because I know I'm not the only person who's enjoyed this series. But I do plan on picking up volumes two and three soon, probably at my next trip to the bookstore. And I really enjoyed this. I will definitely be picking up more in the series. Next we have an entire manga series. It's not a long one, but an entire series that I buddy read with my friend Bazaar over at Bazaar Individual. He will be linked down below if you haven't checked out his channel. And that is Angelic Layer by Clamp. This is a two volume omnibus series. This is really just a fun one. This is a shonen battle manga. <laughs> and I didn't think I was going to like a shonen battle manga, but this is actually really great. If you like shoujo, you would really enjoy this series because it definitely has some shoujo elements to it, but it's definitely battle shonen. So we follow Misaki here, and she just moved to Tokyo to live with her aunt. And somebody immediately finds her and tries to get her to play Angelic Lair, which is like these little battle robots here. And so it's like VR meets battle robots, and it's amazing. I absolutely love this. All of it is a tournament arc. So if you're familiar with Battle Shonen, a lot of them have a tournament style arc. Yu Yu Hakusho, Hunter Hunter, My Hero Academia, like so many of them have tournament arcs. I think Naruto has a couple different ones. At least. The original Naruto has a tournament arc. I'm not sure if Shippuden does. But anyway, it's very common in Shonen to have a tournament arc. And that's completely what this two-volume series is. Now, I have learned that these omnibuses printed by Dark Horse are going out of print. So try to get it digitally if you can, or try to snag them <laughs> before they're all gone. I know you can no longer order it on Right Stuff. I got... Volume 2 from Amazon and Volume 1 from Barnes & Noble. So while supplies last, go pick up your angelic layer. I will be doing a whole dedicated video to this coming up soon. So definitely check it out if you can. Get it however you can. And I would love to hear your thoughts on angelic layer. Next up, I continued on in Horamiya. I read Volumes 4 and 5. In Volume 4, something I wanted to happen happened. And that made my heart very happy. And then Volume 5 was definitely interesting because we're dealing with what happened in Volume 4 in Volume 5. So it's fun. I'm still enjoying Horamiya for now. I know that somewhere within the next couple of volumes, people kind of lose interest in the series. So I will be interested to see if I fall into the camp of still loving it or losing interest. I'm pretty invested in all of the characters at this point, so I think I'll stay invested. But I do know that people lose steam starting around Volume 6 or 7. So we'll see what happens. Next, I continued on in Denkeki Daisy with Volume 4. This is an age gap romance that I continue to love and adore. Volume 4 was really interesting. The story continues to get more and more layers with each volume, and so I continue to fall more and more and more in love with it. I highly recommend trying out Denkeki Daisy to see if you like it. Next, I have Kakurio Bed and Breakfast for Spirits, Volume 3. This released just this month. Loved and adored it. I continue to enjoy the series more and more with each volume. Next we have Shortcake Cake Volume 4. I continue to love my read of Shortcake Cake. This is a fun newer shoujo series that is publishing. This is a boarding house style story. It's really fun. I continue to enjoy it with each volume. I'm looking forward to Volume 5. Next we have Our Dreams at Dusk by Yuki Kamatani. I said the wrong name in my manga first impression, so I want to continue to correct that when I talk about this. But I do have a dedicated manga first impressions of this. This is definitely an emotional read. And this is about a young Japanese boy coming to understand that he has feelings for a male classmate. And it's not as accepted in Japan as it is in the U.S. So 
it's it's really hard to read at points and my heart just goes out to Tasuku as I want to say his name um, but this is a great series I'm glad it's getting published here I think it's very important and I think a lot of people whether they're part of the community or not will relate to it not everybody feels like it's been as impactful as others but to me this was very powerful very impactful I am invested in the series. Next, I opted to continue on with Haikyuu. I read volume two and volume three. This one with each volume, I continue to get more and more invested in these volleyball boys and I, I'm i just here for it. <laughs> I don't care how many volumes this is, I am here for it. It is so long. <laughs> it's, it's already at like 32 or 33 and it continues to publish regularly. So this is obviously going to be a very slow collect for me and I might opt to switch to collecting it digitally. I haven't officially decided yet. If you have any thoughts on the matter, let me know down below. But my space is limited, which is why I'm thinking about switching to a digital collect for this one. I also decided to continue on with my read of Maid Sama. So I read Omnibus 2, which is volumes 3 and 4, and Omnibus 3, which is volumes 5 and 6. I love Maid Sama. I've loved the anime for years and I've watched it over and over again but in the anime things kind of happen in a slightly different order than they do in the manga and I think I prefer the order of things in the manga right now if I'm honest. So yes I am here for Maid Sama. I think it's great. I love it. Highly recommend it. And last but not least for my reads, I know this video is like forever long at this point. I'm sorry you've had to look at my gremlin face for so long. But I continued on in A Bride Story. So I read volume 5, volume 6, and volume 7. This series continues to move me. This one again featured these twins, this particular volume. And I adore these girls. <laughs> are great. I absolutely adore their story and I'm so glad we got a better look at their story and their wedding and everything. This one we go back to our main bride who is 20 years old and her groom is 12. So yes, it's an age gap romance. Again, I'm so on brand. <laughs> it's not even funny. But anyway, I there's a lot of growth for their marriage relationship in this volume and it had my heart soaring. I was loving it. We took a complete break from that story in volume seven and got to know this character who is a young bride with a young child who due to her social standing doesn't really have any friends. So this whole volume is about her journey gaining a female friend. It's beautiful. I wept, but there's a lot of time in the bathhouse. So you're dealing with a lot of naked women. So be warned of that. This is a seinen manga, so I kind of expected that. Usually when they've been bathing in the more rural parts, they've not held back on any of the art there either, but some of the scenes were absolutely stunningly drawn. So I definitely give um, Kaoru Mori props on that. And everything was done very tastefully. I didn't ever feel like they were drawing people naked just for the sake of drawing people naked. Like I never felt that way, so. I just wanted you to be aware that that is the content of this particular volume. But yes, I'm thoroughly invested in this story. I love it. I will continue to read it. I know we get volume 11 in like August, so I will be current by the time that comes out because I've only got 8, 9, and 10 left before I'm current because volume 11 is what's coming out in August. So I will probably finish that here quickly, maybe even during panel -a We'll see. So friends, that is everything I have read so far this month. It's a lot. I know. I kind of have no life. Though, if I'm honest, I have not been doing as much reading the last couple of days. I've been getting hooked on Persona 5 again. I'm actually playing it through again because the first time I played it, I didn't ever actually finish it because I got distracted by other shiny things like books and manga. So I'm really wanting to finish it through this time now that I better understand the game mechanics because I went in really blind the first time I played but I'm enjoying my playthrough much more this time so if my reading pace slows down I mean obviously it hasn't so far but it's only been the last couple days so if you see my reading pace slowing down that's why <laughs> it's because I'm on a Persona 5 kick but if you guys want me to kind of like talk about video games or anything 
on this channel let me know but for right now I'm just going to keep it to kind of books manga and anime because when I've talked about video games in the past my audience hasn't really liked that but my audience has grown and changed a lot since I last tried so if you guys are interested in seeing anything like that let me know and I will talk to you guys in the next one